Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and today we are finally going to be talking about the Malinky ESC which I've been using in a couple of builds recently uh, as stress tests for it. Now, I will say right up the top of this video, this video is not sponsored. I was sent uh, two of these for purpose of review, but uh, I haven't been paid any money for this one. But it's just literally the two ESCs uh, I also went ahead and jumped the gun and built two different robots out of these ESCs so I don't actually have any that are clean with nothing soldered to them for nice uh, glossy shots of them or anything. So you're going to have to live with the wired messes that I have made in and around them. So let's get started and talk about the facts of the thing first and then uh, at the end of the video I will give you my opinion on uh, how it works, what I like about it, what I don't like about it. So this thing is actually really quite small. It is 20 mil by 30 mil by kind of three to six mil depending on where you gauge the thickness of it. There are little different height pieces in there. Uh, it is 2.6 grams, which is really quite nice and light uh, for the capacity that it has. It is a, uh, and I always get this wrong, AF, SHD or HDS something uh, receiver, which means it is compatible with the FlySky series, especially this FSI6, which is a fairly common newbie radio. And personally, I recommend these. These are usually quite cheap, fairly easy to set up, decent as a new and beginner radio. And I mean, I've been fighting for years and I'm still using that for most of my robots. So uh, the fact that these are compatible with those, it's a, a really good thing in my book. Its outputs are where it is interesting though. Most receiver types usually just give you four to six PWM outputs that you can use to plug into an ESC or a servo uh, and you control things that way. The Malinky ESC, however, well, it, it's in the name. It also has three inbuilt brushed ESCs capable of handling 1.8 amps per channel, which is plenty for any uh, N20, N10, or N30 motor, which is basically what you'll be using in a 150 gram ant weight or a 75 gram flea weight, uh, and possibly also up into the American ant weights. However, I don't build those, so I can't really talk about those too much. And it gives you that 1.8 amps at a 1S or a 2S battery capacity, which is quite handy. Uh, sorry, battery voltage. It doesn't do 3S, but realistically in these weight classes, 3S is a bit overkill, so don't do that anyway. In terms of software, it is actually relatively smart. It has an inbuilt mix, which can be enabled and disabled in configuration, which we'll talk about configuration in just a second. It also doesn't have a bind pin or bind switch that you would normally see in a receiver of this kind. To set the Malinky into bind mode is super, super easy. When you get them for the first time, they will go into bind mode automatically when powered up. And any time after you've bind them for the first time, if you turn the thing on and then wait for approximately 90 seconds, it will move itself over into bind mode automatically. Uh, so we'll just have to sit here and wait for a second. Okay, and there we go. We are in bind mode as indicated by the flashing of the LED here. Uh, so in bind mode, then you would bind as you normally would with a transmitter. So you would hold down the bind button, turn on the transmitter, and it would bind as normal. Uh, and in this case, because I've already bound, uh, you can see it's still kind of flickering, but if I now move my drive stick, you'll see that it's actually gone into a drive mode uh, so even though it was in bind mode and it was looking for a bind, when I turned on the transmitter that it had previously been bound to, there was no issues. It just went straight back into drive mode with a quick little flick of the uh, drive stick here, which is awesome. That is what I like to see. So I've turned everything back off because now we're going to talk about the configuration settings. So as I mentioned, there are configuration settings built into the Malinky ESC. I will put a list of them up on screen right now, and they're also available in the documentation, which is linked down below. So there is a whole bunch of different settings you can do, including reversing directions of all three of the motors attached, uh, changing which inputs from your transmitter go to which output of the actual ESC itself, 
uh, and also setting up whether or not you're doing mixing on your drive or not. All of that type of stuff is included. So to get into that state, you simply everything off, you then turn the transmitter on, uh, sorry, the receiver on, wait for five seconds, which that should be about enough. And you'll see now, when we turn the transmitter on, we're getting a flashing little flickering down here off our LED, which indicates that we are actually inside the configuration mode. So at this point, don't touch any of your sticks. What you want to do is go up to this switch up here and flick this back and forth the number of times shown in that little table that I sent you uh, and I put on screen. So this is an interesting little process and I will say that there are some settings that you might need to change inside your menu. My transmitter was already permanently set up or instantly set up so that this switch here is channel number five, which is what you need to toggle to get the settings to change inside the Malinke ESC. Now, a trap that I had when I was doing this for the first time is that up, the up position here is the zero position and down is the five volt position. So when you need to, shh, controller, uh, when you need to get this to ch change, you actually need to go push down to the bottom point that gives a five volt signal and push back up and that's one. So if I want to invert my weapon uh, selection, I need to go one, two, three, four, five. Oops, and I've just gone five. That's not what I wanted, I wanted four. Uh, and five is something different. So let's try this again. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do one, two, three, four. Did I do that right? This is the, the problem with this system. And the other thing you'll see is that during this setup uh, type time, the LED will just keep flashing. Regardless of what you input with your controller, this LED just keeps flashing. There's no real kind of indication that you've managed to do the thing you want to do. So you need to basically do the toggles that you think you need to do, turn the system off, uh, and then turn it back on again to kick it back into drive mode. And then once you're in drive mode like that, that's when you um, have that kind of, yeah, setup that you can see if your changes actually did the thing that you wanted them to do. And in this case, I'm not 100% sure because I need to double check the actual documentation to see what five flicks did, because, uh, yeah, I can't remember off the top of my head. I will also say too, one of the other things that this system does is if we, turn everything off real quick and then to actually that's not what I wanted to do turn transmitter on first and then turn receiver on it does make a lot of noise and it makes a more noise than some other receivers that I connect into this transmitter I don't know what that is about the Malingi ESC that makes it do that uh, level of flashing, but that is just something to keep in mind. I'll also point out too, by the way, that down here on the display, uh, you actually do get feedback from the Malinke and it tells you battery voltage and temperature of the unit, which uh, can come in handy. I personally, I, I don't really use the temperature, but the battery level voltage, uh, the battery voltage level returned from the system is very nice to know because it basically lets you know if your battery is good to go for another fight or not at the end of your last fight. And basically, before you turn everything off, you can quickly check this and go, ah, we're at eight volts. Okay, I could throw it in for another fight if I really needed to right now. So that is all of the features and bits and pieces of it. Let's talk good and bad. So the good. This thing is tiny. It is really, it's a small form factor. It is a low weight. It makes building ant weights a whole lot easier. Uh, it also, of course, simplifies your wiring down because basically it's power into the ESC, receiver combo, and then motor wires out. For everything that is three brushed motors or even kind of three bru uh, two brushed motors and a brushless ESC, it's all fairly simple and lightweight and easy to do with the Malinke ESC. As mentioned before, the receiver type is good. It's uh, a good system to be hooked into because it lines up really quite nicely with cheap and usable transmitters, which is absolutely perfect. It's also ridiculously robust. I ran uh, a Malinke ESC in Vera, which was designed to be the worst possible outcome or the worst possible use 
for this type of ESC and despite the fact that I got hit hard enough on the weapon that got forced backwards fast enough to snap gear teeth in an M20 motor, the ESC itself handled that totally fine. So it handled the back driven spikes, it handled just a rough and ready environment. And finally, in this category, it doesn't lock into a bind mode. This was something I was worried about early on when I was reading through the documentation for it. By the way, documentation and uh, purchase link are in the description down below. Should have mentioned that at the top, but here we are. Uh, it doesn't lock into a bind mode. My club has rules where you turn your robot on, put the, rob or put the robot into the arena, turn the robot on, remove safety, and then only after the box is locked do you turn the transmitter on to basically enable your robot. Uh, so I was worried that the Malinkis were going to lock into a bind mode after the 90 odd seconds and that I wouldn't be able to load the robot in, turn the thing on and then close the arena up and you know activate everything fast enough to avoid bind mode. But it doesn't matter, you can just uh, yeah let it go into bind mode, flick the, uh, turn your transmitter on, flick the sticks around a little bit, it picks up and it goes into drive mode just fine. So let's talk about the bat. Uh, and the bad here mostly comes down to the software side of things. So what I'm hoping is that uh, there will be firmware updates for the Malinke ESC in the future and a lot of these will kind of get resolved uh, because from a hardware perspective, I think it's really, really good. It's small and light and all of the things that I've said in the good side of this conversation already. So the bad for me is just mostly to do with the setup itself. It doesn't fill me with a whole lot of confidence. The, uh, the way of setting the configuration is a little bit clunky and the lack of feedback in that process at all is really, really undermining to my confidence in actually setting up a combat robot, especially when you're doing things like uh, setting your weapon direction, which is the configuration setting I tried in this one where I changed the direction of the weapon uh, port on the motor. That type of thing you need, uh, you want to be 100% sure that it has gone through exactly as you wanted it to go through. And in setting up both of these, I had to do a bunch of different little configuration tweaks like removing the inbuilt mixing because I have mixing set on my transmitter already. Uh, setting up a brushless motor on the flea weight meant flicking the uh, settings around for that. Actually setting up the one for Vera also did mean flicking the settings around for that as well. And I had to do all of these things basically blind. The only way I knew that they'd worked is by making the change, powering everything down, powering it all back up with the ESC connected to motors, but not with wheels or weapons or anything attached to them and doing as safe a testing as I can possibly do. But that process was a very slow iterative process where I was doing one setting at a time and you know, basically change the setting, stop everything, reset everything, test it out, go back into setting mode and over and over and over again, because there was lack of any feedback at all. There's no real, you've made this a successful change, you've made no successful change um, type of feedback, but that's not even the feedback I'd want from this. The feedback I'd want from this is some way of the ESC telling you the code of the thing that you've changed. So for example, if I sat there and flicked the lever back and forth four times, I would want the, ES, uh, the light on the ESC to stop for a second and then flash back four times to me to confirm to me, the person using this, that uh, I've actually done the thing that I wanted it to do. So I set these both up. Uh, Vera's was actually harder than uh, Dr. Criminal's, even though I did Vera's second. I kind of accidentally did into it with Vera's, uh, with Dr. Criminal, and then with Vera's I had a bit of issue with that, which is what I was talking about with the pull down for five volt rail and pull up for zero. Uh, that tripped me up in Vera's setup and not in Dr. Criminal's setup, which I don't know why that was just a thing that happened. Um, but yeah, it, it did make me a little nervous and a little jumpy about actually using these in a combat robot. I mean, considering I put them into a flea and a lifter hammer uh, respectively, I wasn't too, too worried about safety because I kind of knew at the end of the day, these two robots weren't ever going to be the most dangerous things that I'd built. But 
Uh, if I was putting this into a robot that had a 50 gram weapon on it, for example, I probably would have backed out and stopped using the Malinke ESC altogether. So like I said, I would love to see a future firmware update that fixes some of these problems. They are entirely fixable, uh, but they're just, yeah, they, it didn't instill, instill me with a lot of confidence. Having said that though, once I actually did manage to get through the setup stage and have everything set up and working, they worked fine. They worked really well. It was just getting over that hurdle of setting them up and then being confident that the things that I'd set up would actually work the way I expected them to. The only other kind of minor gripe, and this one is actually an electrical gripe of mine, is that there is no five volt output on this board. And I can kind of understand why the whole board itself runs at 3.3 volts, so all of the internal uh, talking is done at 3.3 volts. The reason I would like to see a five volt output on this is for uh, people who want to run a two wheel drive and then servo lifter style robot. Uh, if you use this one at the moment and buy a really, really cheap Metal Gear servo, it will need a 5 volt line, which will mean that to do your wiring, you'll actually have to input a back just to run your servo, uh, which is something you kind of have to do in some things anyway, but if you do have a 5 volt line running somewhere on the robot, you can easily pilfer it to power your servo. With this setup, you don't have that, which this one's, that's a very minor drawback. It's the very bottom of my concerns. It's not something that I would ever run into anymore because personally I use high voltage servos these days to kind of get around that whole issue. Uh, but for a brand new person running a robot for the very first time, they might need that five volt line and not have it. Uh, but like I said, very minor gripe as compared to the whole configuration setting issues thing. Right, yeah, so that is, that's my take on these. I, at the end of the day, on the whole, I like the Malinke ESC. I, I really do. The form factor and the robustness of the electronics have won me over. And the fact that once I did manage to get them set up, uh, they have worked reliably for me. I They've grown my confidence in them since having set them up because it's kind of like confidence level was here, I went to set them up, it's plummeted into the table and then it's kind of slowly climbed back up and I'm fairly confident in the use of the Malinke ESC now. So like I said, if that one little thing or that one decent sized thing was changed in the firmware, I would probably run these uh, for all of my ant weights because they're that nice light and uh, yeah, a, a nice little compact way of setting up an ant weight. Uh, I mean, the other thing too is that at the moment these are mostly only sold in the UK. There is a link in the description to uh, documentation and where you can buy these. Uh, and at the moment, the only place I really know selling them is uh, BBB in the UK. It'd be really nice to see them uh, yeah, with more distributors elsewhere, but I do also understand they are being made by one person. So that is a lot to ask at this point in time. So that's it. I, I actually want to pose a question to you. Have you used a Malinke ESC? What did you think of them? Do you think I'm right? Do you think I'm wrong in this video? Let me know in the comments down below. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this one and I will see you in the next video.